Hello, this is Haku Devin. I am here with 67, 68, 69, and 70. If you like the video, please press the like button. If you dislike the video, then don't watch it, I guess. Please subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below. Starting off, we have SCP-67, The Artist's Pen. Item number SCP-67, Object Class Safe. Special Containment Procedures. When not in use or or the study of or the subject of study, SCP-67 is restored in its outlined wooden box. The Nibis V Court art and all art and rags are to be submitted to SV Research Command for analysis and further experimentation. Description SCP-67 is a foundation and it's a fountain pen made by German supply like have called a pelican at some point in between World War One and Two. It is pale green in color with a single red line and going straight down along the side. The shell is oak and the nib is extremely sharp, capable of piercing human skin if pressed even lightly. Though it apparently lacks the reservoir, the nib never appears to run out of fresh ink. In addition, the pen writes an iron gall ink, which is suitable for artists but would normally corrode the typical fountain pens ends quickly. Research has surmised that any subject holding SP-67 looks as all autonomy of the hand and arm that grasps it. The sensation is intact, but the arm below the elbow is controlled by unknown forces, theoretically centralized within SCP-67. One effect is that the controlled hand will start to use a pen to write a detailed biography of the individual holding the pen. The biography will include such information as the person's name, age, day of birth, criminal record, fears, etc. Other times, the pen has been known to write such things as an occurrence that happened in the person's lifetime. For example, when test subject 1204M held SB67, he began to write a detail of the record of a motor vehicle accident he had been in the year before. Later, the subject admitted that many details penned in the account were not readily available to him at present time i.e. the subject had forgotten many elements present in the written work, including his previous car's license plate number, the other vehicle's color, and so on. The sources say that his memory of the event was so fresh in his mind during the transcription that he could, that he could taste the blood in his mouth. Subjects holding SCP-67 have also been known to create intricate works of art, despite the subject lacking any formal art training or previous tendencies toward drawing. For example, the subject 11-N02-OF, a young woman with no previous artistic experience, was able to draw a winged creature resembling SCP-, blank, described by researchers as data expunged. When subjects are asked to explain what happens when they hold SCP-67, the typical response is that the subject freely relinquishes control of their appendage to SCP-67 so they complete its work unimpeded. See quoted response 01. Despite being instructed to not draw or write, subjects describe feeling things of empathy, admiration, and cooperation with SCP-67 that courses them toward a will not of their own. Quoted response one. I don't really know how to explain it. It just kind of happened. When I picked up the pen, it seemed as if my hand wasn't my own anymore. I knew I could move it if I wanted to, but I chose not to because I loved the picture I was drawing. It was like my hand had life. Suddenly my hand stopped and I realized I had complete control over my hand again. I put the pen back down. I looked at the drawing and saw all how beautiful it was. I guess the pen decided it was done and was finished with me. 
tests and experiments. In a year or between now and the 2000, a test was done to see how defend affected living creatures other than humans. Experiment 1. The test subject, a real a male Oresis is macabre. They really love these is part this particular species of monkeys. Aged two years for months, who had previously learned how to use pens and markers, was placed in a standard psychological surveillance room. Neutral wall coloration, one way observation mirrors with SCP E six seven, a work table, and a pad of paper. Subject picked up SCP-67 in his left foot, then took it in his right hand, then tasted it. Subject then it put the pen down on the paper and smelled it. After 30 seconds, subject picked up SCP-67 again and began tapping it repeatedly on the table. Subject also began tapping in, in SCP-67 on, on his own body. So he tapped at SCP-67 A67 with increasing force until ink was splattered on his fur. So he then threw SCP-67 onto the floor. The subsequent mechanical analysis revealed no damage. At this point, subject tore our page from the pad paper and began rubbing it on ink on his fur. This continued for three minutes, as which subject clutched a large page with its teeth left from and leaped from the work table onto the ledge edge of the observation mirror with such force that the table was knocked over. So he began spraying the ink from the paper onto the observation mirror. Oh, can repeat vocalizations. Subsequent analysis revealed that 50% vocalizations were consistent with typical distress vocalizations of this particular monkey type, and 50% were unfamiliar. After six minutes of searing ink on the observation mirror, Septic began tearing at the page with the, with the teeth and claws, but dropped it before destroying more than in 20% of the paper, subject then collapsed on the floor, breathing rapidly and repeating the uh, unfamiliar atypical vocalizations. Subject's handler reports that once removed from psycholo um, psychological surveillance room, subject's so move improved rapidly. Subject was closely observed for two minutes following the experiment, but did not repeat the uh, atypical vocalizations. The sheet paper was filed away in that expunged. Now we're going to SCP-68, also known as the Wire Figure. I remember SCP-68, Object Class Safe. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-68 is to be kept away from any metals in an electric resistant and box, preferably made of a Polytetra or line and rubber. Said box is to be stored in Security Locker 26 at Site 11. Key is kept with Dr. Blank. Any requests for testing are to be redirected to him. Description SCP 68 is a wire stick figure. 9.3 when 8 centimeters tall, made of an unknown metal. The figure is composed of a single wire looping back to the center. The wire itself appears to have been bent numerous times in multiple places. When an electrical when an electric current is introduced to SV-68, it becomes animate. Moving about on its own, SV-68, its joints are where a normal human being would be. Once activated, SV-68 begins to search for any metallic material. Once metal has been found, SCP-68 will begin to knead it in a fold and, and strip of metal off. SCP-68 will then construct another figure similar to itself. <sighs> the newly created figure will oh, begin to knead the remaining metal alongside the original, creating new figures, which in turn produce more replicas. SCP-68 will move on to its next stage after... One or two, one of two requirements are met. The first is when there are no more metals in range with enough pet mass to produce another figure. The other is when an emperor limit of 102 replicas are created. When either of these events occur, all figures will converge at 
one location begin forming themselves into as big a figure as possible, with a maximum of uh, one uh, hundred and two. Any figures, the resulting figure reaches two meters in height. SCP-68 weighs itself in the intersection of the torso, or arms, and head. Gamma, beta, and theta ray is begin e emanating from SV-68 after its union. SV-68 will then begin to search for metals again, attempting to create more figures, only to get up to whatever her size 68 is currently. Yeah, these replicas do not e emanate brain waves like 68 does. If 68 is not at maximum size limit after this, it will continue to create and add more figures until the limit is reached. Once it has reached the second stage and there are no OMLs available from which to construct figures, SV-68 returns to its dormant state after 4 minutes and 32 seconds of activity. Materials surrounding the original figure must be melted away in order to retrieve SCP-68. SCP-68 is capable of needing manipulating any metal presented to it, regardless of properties. It also appears to be impervious to any attempts to damage or destroy it. Copies of SCP-68, however, have the same properties and vulnerabilities as whatever metal they were constructed from. SCP-68 can detect metals, will said from view through an as of yet unknown process. While 68 will not attempt to reach metals that are too difficult to get to, it will tear through anything that is soft enough for its limits to penetrate. What it can do, soft enough changes depending on what SCP-68 is shaped from at the time. Addendum 68A. A role that has been made to use SV68 to or dispose of, of metal based SCPs. Addendum 68B. Please see it as document 68A. Document number 68A. Hmm. The proposal to use 68 for the disposal of dangerous metal-based SCVs has been denied, seeing as how, how many, if not all, of our our dangerous metal-based SCVs are also invincible. The only thing we would have is a bunch of invulnerable wire figures running about. Honestly, who even thought this up? Dr. Blank. Dang, Dr. Blank is always so mean. Now we go to SCP-69 also known as Second Chance. Add number SCP Nice. No, I'm kidding. SCP-69. Object Class Safe. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-69 is currently impersonating former Foundation Agent Blank. And is housed at Humanoid Containment Site 063. You to be able to provide SCP-69 with any reasonable requested item and or material so long as such request does not violate Foundation Security Protocols. As SCP-69 is currently on suicide watch, all requests it make all requests it makes must be approved by no fewer than two level three personnel. If SCP-69 attempts to breach containment, it must be subdued using non-lethal methods. If SCP-69 dies, undercover agents are to be charged to monitor reports of incidents in which individuals appear to have escaped certain death, and SCP-69 is to be contained as soon as possible. No, despite the fact that SCP-69 is identical in all ways to Agent Blank, I'm going to call Adam Bob to Agent Bob, it remains an active SCP in containment and is not to be treated as foundation as as a as a foundation employee. Any requests for classified information are to be denied, and visits from formal or coworkers without proper authorization are not allowed. Description. SCP-69 is a presumed humanoid entity of variable appearance and gender. 
Through an unknown ability, whenever SCP-69 is left alone as a recently deceased human body, the body will disappear and SCP-69 will take on the appearance, mannerisms, and knowledge of the recently dead individual. Through extensive experimentation, it has been shown that SCP-69 is completely indistinguishable from the individual it impersonates. Matching the, ind the original individual's fingerprints, DNA, and data expunged with nearly perfect precision. SV-69 retains no knowledge of his abilities or former impersonations. SV-69 responds normally to injury and pain, but killed will rapidly decay into dust regardless of any preservation attempts. SCP-69 will then re-emerge at the site of the most recent human death. There is no known max of ratios effect and so so far has been observed in jumps of up to 675 kilometers. SCP-69 can impersonate a single individual indefinitely, however it will gain an overriding urge to get their life in order, including but not limited to resolving any fa assigned financial or personal obligations, visiting an extended family, updating their will and testament, and other acts of closure. When questioned, SV-69 professes no driving motivation other than a desire to straighten out their lives in the event of unforeseen injury or death. SCP-69 first came to the Foundation's attention in the 90s, following reports of one John on M, a blank city firefighter who miraculously emerged alive from a three-alarm building fire in which two other firefighters and 11, and 11 civilians perished. Undercover agents attached to the local authorities were notified of a possible SCP when reports emerged that the firefighters' equipment had been damaged beyond recognition and that it had been deemed nearly impossible for the firefighter to emerge unscathed. <sighs> now, approximately three weeks later, then resumed that John M. responded to another large-scale building fire, during which he entered a smoke-filled room alone and was never found. A single civilian was rescued from the building, again nearly unharmed despite the heavy smoke before it within the building. SV-69 was designated the following day and thrown into Foundation in custody by members of Mobile Task Force XI-3, Body Snatchers. In the early 2000s, Agent and Bob, a guard on I'm guessing this is an agent Bob actually. An agent on a guard on duty to SCP-69 was killed during the containment breach of SCP Unknown and subsequently impersonated by SCP-69. Although initially in denial after being informed of its identity, it has been mostly cooperative since its impersonation of a mid-level of a mid-level Foundation employee. Contingencies for the use of deceased Foundation employees for future their SCP-69 uses under consideration. On another day in the early 2000s, SCP-69 attempted to commit suicide after a junior researcher accidentally informed that the family of Agent Blank had been told that Agent Bob was dead and of their subsequent reactions. Due to the massive costs of possibly having to recontain SCP-69, strict suicide watch measures are to be implemented. Plants use utter disease foundation employers employees as possible impersonation targets for SCP-69 has been suspended. Now we go to SCP-70, the Iron Wings. 
Item number SCP-70, Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures The SCP-70 is to be kept within a 10 meter by 10 meter reinforced concrete room that is to be guarded and remotely monitored at all times. The room must always be well stocked with non-perishable food and water. See document 70 AIC for complete inventory of these items as well as basic amenities for humanoid SCPs. Security personnel designed to SCP-70 are to carry sticky foam guns in addition to standard arm armaments. Structural integrity of SCP-70's containment room is to be checked twice daily in case of excessive structural damage. SCP-70 is to be incapacitated and relocated to a nearby backup containment room, as described above. If a reinforced concrete room of sufficient strength is not available, SV-70 may be temporarily contained in a cell of stronger material until another concrete room can be prepared. SCP-70 is to be given in sedatives and painkillers on request, but no more than maximum dosage determined by a doctor or doom out. Personnel who enter SV-70's containment room for any reason must be unarmed and should wear puncture-resistant body armor. Armed guards must remain outside and out of sight of SCP-70. In case of, a, of containment breach due to somnambulism, security personnel are to alert site administration in place food and water in the apparent path of SCP-70 and maintain a clear zone of 25 meters around SCP-70 in any other case of containment breach or if SCP-70 becomes violent during some nonbolism. Personnel are authorized to incapacitate SCP-70 using sticky foam. Carol G is taken to avoid smothering SCP-70 because as SCP-70 is effectively responds violently to injure or attack, the security personnel should refrain from using from using lethal force or otherwise injuring SCP-70 if at all possible. Description. SCP-70 appears to be a human male of Native American descent, with a normal appearance save for a pair of rusty metal wings emerging from his back. Each wing is composed of several flat iron bars about 6 centimeters wide, connected end-to-end -end by rotating rivets to form an, an articulated length of metal over 2 meters long. Hanging from these bars are chains of various lengths, 22 on each wing, each tipped with a barbed arrowhead. SV-70 appears to be appears to have no other anomalies, anomalous properties besides these wings. The wings of SV-70 appear to act independently of the person they are attached to, and SV-70 has a repeatedly that it has no control over them. However, when damage has been done to the wings, SV-70 has shown sight. Signs of physiological distress include sweating, reduced blood flow to face, and screaming in pain. The wings have been observed to fold and expand, shoot out oh, no, with its shades at high a speed, both individually and collectively, and anchor its arrowheads into concrete, wood, and like materials. While SV-70 has not displayed any overt hostility to personnel, it will often react violently to perceived threats by lashing its chains out as at assailants and wrapping its chains around its body in, def in a defensive posture. The most effective means of a sub of duo has proven to be sticky foam, non-lethal weaponry, which can reliably ensnare SV-70's chains from a safe distance. Despite the rested appearance, the wings and chains of SV-70 are a strong, as high-quality alloy still. However, they are also as dense as steel, and SCP-70 cannot move about as a normal human due to the weight of, of its wings. As yet, SCP-70 has been an unable or unwilling to use its wings to facilitate human and, and locomotion. 
SCP-70 spends most of its time anchored to the walls and ceiling of its containment and cell, usually sedated. Addendum Incident 71 On a date, crazy, at 3.36, SCP-70 reached containment. Security personnel were advised SCP-70 appeared to be asleep and were ordered not to engage SCP-70 and to keep others away. By lashing and anchoring its chains into walls and ceiling in front of it, SCP-70 was able to carry itself, so all apparently sleep through sight blank. SCP-70 broke into the food source of Canteen 4 and threw its seeds, gorged itself on available food and water. Almost 19 minutes later, apparently stated, SCP-70 returned to its containment room. At no time did SCP-70 appear to wake up. SCP-70 claimed no knowledge of the event afterward. Okay. Interviewers have revealed that SCP-70 is named Bob and is current and is capable of reciting the correct social security number for a U.S. citizen of the same age and name. SCP-70 claims to be a member of the Kiowa tribe and that I expunge. SCP-70 claims to not know how the wings came to be, only remember Aang waking up in a scrap yard with them after taking and a lot of fields the night before. And that was SCP 67, 68, 69, and 70. I hope to see you next time for more or interesting stories for me to read. If you liked the video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.